In the vast realm of Backyardia, the Bug Council convenes to discuss important things like picnics, how to ruin picnics, and of course, income tax reform. The different factions of bugs, ants, flies, bees, mosquitoes, and cockroaches, find themselves in an ever-shifting balance of power and only those who ally themselves with the most powerful will seize the day. Welcome to my Kickstarter preview of Bug Council of Backyardia. Hey everyone, this is Rathagas and I'm back with another Kickstarter preview. This time I will be looking at the trick-taking game Buck Council of Backyardia. This is at first glance a trick-taking game as you know it, but there are quite a few things this game does differently. So first of all, the game uses a Mancala mechanism to dynamically change the strength of the suits throughout the game. The Mancala mechanism lets players pick up tokens in one space and then place them one by one in spaces in a specific direction around the circle, with the last space placed in usually having spe special significance. That's the council chambers in the middle, but I will get to that later. But this means that players always need to keep an eye on the stronger suits in order to win the most tricks, and this is what separates the game from other trick-taking games. Let me first quickly set up the game, but from my viewpoint only, since I don't have any other people with me in this video right now to play the game with me. So let me just set up the game first, quickly. Alright, so let me guide you through the setup. Here in the middle, as you saw before, is the council board. Um, the H marker here is on the first space. The game lasts three rounds or ages. Here you can see five council members, and now we will draw cards in order to distribute their current strength. For the first faction we draw, we will put four cubes on it, then three, then two, then one. The last council member will get no cubes. So let me do that now. Alright, and here you can see the current strength of the five council members or of the suits, so to speak. Um, also, every player has 11 cards in their hand, as well as two declaration cards, which I will come to in a minute. Um, a scoring marker up here on the first field, and also an allegiance banner, which is this flag token here. Now we're ready to start the game. Just imagine we have more players here with cards sitting around the table too. So first there is the declaration phase. Every player chooses one of the two declaration cards right here, which will then all be revealed simultaneously after everybody has chosen. With their choice, players either declare allegiance right here or no allegiance. I will tell you later what that exactly means, but for now all players that declared no allegiance will tip over their allegiance banner and discard one face up. But what I will do, I will actually declare allegiance in this round, just to show you how that works. Then there's the trick phase. In this phase players will pay 10 tricks and that works pretty much as usual, so each trick phase is broken up into three parts. Playing the trick, resolving the trick and visiting the council. So the lead player, let's say that's me, begins by playing any card from their hand. That suit is the lead suit. So let's say, for example, I would have usually put my cards in all of their color and I would just play, for example, the blue suit. The other players all need to follow suit if they have that suit in their hand. So in this case, they would all have to play a blue card mosquito council member over here. Um, that works like in most trick-taking games. Otherwise, if they don't have that suit, they can play any card. And then the tricks are resolved. So for example, let me draw a few cards here for two other players. All right, let's imagine that the other two players that I play against didn't have the blue suit and player two played a red card and player three played that black card. So if all players followed suit, the player who played the highest card wins the trick. Um, but in this case, like in this case, if not all players followed suit, then the player with the highest card of the strongest suit wins the trick. And this is where these council members here come in. The council member with the most cubes is the strongest suit. So we see um, blue, red, and black. Blue is the weakest suit. Black has three weak cubes on it, so that's okay, it's quite strong, the second strongest suit, and red has four cubes. That means this is the strongest suit, so player two wins the trick, because player two played the highest card with, of the strongest suit. Let's say this player also played a red card, but it would be a six, 
then player two would still win because it's the highest card. So that trick would go to player two. Then the player who played the lowest valued on suit card would visit the council. In this card, nobody played an on suit card because I don't count because I'm the lead player. So um, in this example, no one would visit the council. But let's say someone did play a lower on suit card and would now visit the council. Then they activate any council space. So for example, let's say they activate the red one here. They pick up all the cubes and then they go in a clockwise direction and distribute one cube each clockwise on each field like this. And then you see suddenly the power has dramatically shifted because the red suit is not the strongest anymore. It's now the weakest and the strongest is now the black one. And this is what's really interesting because that power dynamic of the five different councils or suits changes throughout the entire game all the time. So should we, let's say we would have completed a full revolution, then we would have um, put one cube on that council space too, and then all access cube would have been put in the council chambers in the middle. Um, and these cubes would stay there until the end of the game. And I will tell you in just a little while what that means. This entire process of playing tricks is repeated until 10 tricks have been played. Then there's the storing and upkeep phase. Let me just remove nine cards from my hand as if we would have played 10 tricks just to show you how it looks like. So tricks are worth one point each. So let's say I would have gotten seven tricks, then I would get seven points. But the allegiance is very important because that's gonna be scored now. And this is the interesting part. So players who swore allegiance like I did, reveal their leftover card, which is that green one here, and then receive as many points as there are cubes on the faction that is shown on the card. So this is the green faction here with the grasshopper, I suppose. And so that one is three cubes strong. So that's three cubes at uh, three points plus all the tricks I did. Let's say I let's say I played um, I got three tricks and these three points here. So I would get six points, put my marker over there. But players who did not swear allegiance received 10 points in case they didn't score any tricks at all during that age, plus one point per cubes in the council chambers. And then all players move their scoring markers to the respective number, then everything is reset. The upkeep phase is done. And then we go to the next age where all phases are repeated. And that's pretty much how you play Bug Council or Backyardia in a nutshell. So what's my first impression of it? Let's start with the positives. I love the theme. I like nature themes in general, as some of you who know my channel might be aware of, but I can't name any games with bugs as their theme. And I really like games that try something new or rare regarding their theme. And I do quite like the artwork too. This is still a work in progress, I suppose. But still, if it goes, if that is a little bit refined and goes in that direction, I think this could look pretty nice um, as a physical copy. Also, the game adds an interesting new mechanic that I haven't seen in any trick-taking game before, and it does so quite elegantly. So the Mancala mechanism does fit here quite well, and it shakes up the formula enough that you can play this game even though you already own other trick-taking games. Yet the game is not overcomplicated by that and kept simple enough. This is quite well done by the game designers. What really surprised me is that there is even a two-player version of the game, which is great, since not many trick-taking games offer that, and there even is a solo mode in development, which is even better. I don't know how that will look like, because it's still in development and I don't know the rules of that one yet, but I'm really looking forward to checking that one out. From what I see here in the Tabletopia version, the game seems to be mainly language neutral, which I highly enjoy. Um, this just opens up the game for more potential players, which is great. So in my example, um, I'm based in Germany and most of my friends are German. Some of them know English well enough for games, but some of them don't. Um, I always have that issue. Do I want to get a game in English for myself and for the channel, or do I get it in German so I can play it with more of my friends? And if I have a language neutral version, that's much better because many more people have access to this game. So that's great. There are no negatives I can mention per se, but a few things I want to say before ending this video. Since I haven't received a physical copy, I can't say anything regarding the components. Um, the game would really benefit from having especially nice components since the Mancala mechanism would really shine if you have like really nice cubes you can push around on that board here. Despite the different mechanism, it still is a trick taking game at heart. So if you don't like that mechanic, that main mechanic, the game most likely is not going to convert you. 
but that makes sense since that is the main mechanic. So if you don't like trick taking games, the Mancala mechanism is not gonna sell you over for this game, most likely. But it does shake up the formula enough, I would say at least. All right, that concludes my short Kickstarter preview of Bug Council of Bagyardia. It shakes up the trick taking formula quite a bit with the Mancala mechanism. This sets the game apart from any other games of the genre. If you like trick taking games, I would highly suggest you check this out. Tinky Pain will go live on August 3rd this year, 2021. All right. If you're still watching, thank you very much for sticking until the very end. Consider looking at the other videos on my channel and subscribing if you like what you see. Alright, I'll see you later. Take care everyone. Bye bye.